From the beginning of this century on, classical ballet found a rival in North European expressionist dance. It was Rudolf von Laban who laid the foundations for this new form. He was born in 1879 in Bratislava, at the heart of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The Habsburg Empire was a mosaic of diverse cultures, races, and traditions. Laban was the son of a military officer and able to travel across the empire. From very early on, he was fascinated by the diversity of dances and the variety of the body's movements and expressions he saw. His father wanted him to enter the army, but Laban preferred the bohemian life to military maneuvers and painting to the art of war. He studied fine art in Munich and in Paris. In 1907, he returned to Vienna. The empire was on the verge of an extraordinary apocalypse. Nietzsche had proclaimed, God is dead. This led to wholesale re-evaluation of the established order. In Vienna, Wittgenstein outlined his first theories, encouraged by Krauss. They both brought the limits of language into question. In Vienna, Freud denounced the powers of reason to explore the depths of the psyche. In Vienna, the writers Schnitzler, Hugo von Hofmannsthal, and Feig, and the painters Kokoschka, Klimt, and Schiele, revealed the fragility of the individual and his disintegration. Again in Vienna, the composer Schoenberg revolutionized traditional harmony by liberating music from the formal structures of tonality. The pace of industrialization accelerated. There was a violent reaction against the threat from society and the machine. This was manifested in a return to nature to a free and healthy body. In this atmosphere, the Americans, Isadora Duncan and Ruth St. Dennis, met with great success. They wanted to free the body from any constraint. Their best known disciple was Greta Wiesenthal. In this environment, Laban would lay the foundations for a new dance. First of all, he located its essential components, space, time, and weight. Dance had evolved in a flat space, limited by the audience it was forced to face. Laban cut through this and gave back to space its depth. He conceived of movement through space in a volume whose form would be the icosahedron, that is to say, a volume of multiple directions. Space became a mobile partner to the dancer, moving at the same time. He then addressed the pace and time of movement, quick or slow, brief or sustained, no longer limited by music. The meter of a poem or silence alone sufficed. Movement was freed from time. Finally, he addressed weight. While the classical dancer tried to escape the downward pull of gravity through balance and lift, Laban made use of weight. It was he who determined the dynamics of movement and the continual swing between balance and imbalance. He realized that for every muscular contraction, there was a relaxation. Laban liberated movement from all formal constraints. He emancipated it from music, drama, and from any conventional notion of steps. His search through movement for a total harmony of soul and spirit had parallels with the ideas of Der Blaue Reiter, the Blue Rider, a group of painters who had settled in Munich in 1913 around Vasily Kandinsky and Franz Marc. Kandinsky said, every work of art proceeds from an inner necessity and also said, art has to render visible the invisible. After the summer of 1913, Laban gave classes and lectures in Switzerland at the edge of Lake Maggiore in Monteverita. It was a center for the intelligentsia. There, Rainer Maria Rilke, James Joyce, 
and Hugo Ball were to be found alongside the Russian anarchists, all basked in a society in harmony with nature and in the climate of reform. There, Laban found the perfect conditions to experiment with his ideas. 